Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It Down. Let's speak to the woman that doesn't belong here. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? She jingles a set of keys in her hand. Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? She fumbles through her purse, but she got a light paper-clad passport. Inspect the passport. It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Nice haircut. Hand back the passport. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. She slips the passport back in her purse. Uh, what are you doing here? I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. She sighs and looks around. A reprehensible. Who lived here? It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. She stops, hesitating. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. I'm wondering if this was the guy that owned the taxidermy business that the dice maker told us about they got hooked on drugs. I think that's the only old man that she mentioned owning a business. Isn't it a bit late to be working? It is. She breathes in and out to the count of three. Looks like some special stress release technique before she continues. Everyone says the real estate agents don't do anything. But here I am in the middle of the night cleaning up someone's crash pad. So the sooner we get this over with, the better. She means you. Time for the next question. Who lived in the foreclosed apartment down the hallway? Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. She spreads her hands. And then she snaps her fingers. The sum must have been puny. My money has also disappeared, I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. It couldn't have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. It's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. So wait, what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head. Manicured hands now crossed over the chest. Well, that's all. Thank you. Of course. As she replies with a smile, but her eyes remain glazed over. She's been waiting for you to leave. All right, let's report back to the cleaning lady. Um. I am trapped inside this apartment. I'm going to try something real fast. It looks like the door... I can't tell if the door is open in that image or not. 
Let's just try reloading my previous save and see if the door remains open. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Sharp. Her voice. All right, was you click through this again? ID as well? It feels flimsy in hand. Thank you. Do you? All right, let's click through all this real it fast. Ready for it was that. That was month. It is everyone. So the sooner we. Get oh, that's an and again. A whole. The sum must have been puny. Well, it does not. These apartments. I'll tell you. It's as if they're real. Don't ask. Me. Both apartments are now. Of course. All right, good. I can escape. <laughs> that was weird. All right. Give me a moment. Uh, the clean lady st still seems to be having difficulty breathing. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment number 10. It was just a real estate agent setting up the room for new tenants. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. She takes out her handkerchief and wipes her nose. I'm sure everything will be fine. This apartment building needs slow change. Imperceptibly slow. Yes. Well. <clears throat> I hope they're good people. She doesn't know what to say, so she just coughs and repeats. Your statements are too vague to comment on. Alright. Another one down. How close am I leveling up? I am getting there. 25 more experience. Well, let's go out to the balcony before we go upstairs. Or downstairs. It's almost 10 p.m. I wonder when Kim is supposed to leave, or if he's going to leave by himself, or if I have to go back to the motor carriage. Let's put to go to bed after 2100. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff. Your distant traffic, night is falling on the city. A maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. The breaker box is full of cigarette butts and electric wires. Some more money. Always welcome. Just a door. Nothing for you here right now. Someone's growing rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. I have a cactus in my office. It's a very, very tiny cactus. This is the door to apartment number 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. So that must be 28 where our friend lives. This is the door to apartment number 30. Voices from within, singing along to some buoyant dance track. Alright, this is like that connects to that uh, walkway where my raincoat's at. I don't want to commit to talking to the smoker yet. I'm going to finish exploring the apartment complex, I think. Go out the other balcony door and go up and down stairs, look for loot. We'll come back and talk to him last. This will listen increase my morale. I guess that makes sense, and I'm assuming one of the physical instrument stats increases my own. Oh. Nope. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray Hell. the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. Form a guess about what happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline. Fired from the water. A straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. Taking the ocean. The waves of the Martinez Inlet rolled over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscured the better part of the remains. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Look at the ruins in the water. 
Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shilling took out was never rebuilt. Who did this? This damage? A fleet. The combined armies of Occident and Grad. With Mesk volunteers. A five nation army. Hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Coalition warship Archer can shoot 50 shells a minute on 20 coal-aligned archers. They will reach the city in 58 seconds. Hey Kim, do you know who shelled our city? The Coalition, but that was a long time ago. I think we should move on, it's chilly up here. Says the Lieutenant. He does not like talking politics of this kind. All right, time to go. Oh, he wants to talk. We should think about calling it a day, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. You should take care of that, then. But I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. Alright, uh, before I do that, let's loot this and examine this. The door is locked. You can't get in. The chair is new. Someone lives back here. Alright, let's go talk to uh, Gart then. See if we can find somewhere to sleep tonight. And now would probably be a good time to start looking at my case files as well, if Kim wants to call it a night. I can also go talk to Kuno, give him the cigarettes without Kim around. And see about, um... Getting some information from him. Once I make reparations. Because <laughs> I have to make reparations with a child. A very annoying child at that. Sadly, I did not get the body down on the first day. Um, I think that'll be my primary focus the second day. I'm going to turn in the quest to the... Bookseller. And then I'm probably going to focus on going to the Union. Let's see if I can't get them to help me take the body down, so I can finally get the body down. I think it needs to needs to come down. I also try waking up this sleeping dock worker again. I don't know if it's worth my time, but oh, there's more people here. The worker is in a deep slumber. Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from, into the primordial darkness. Uh, wake him up. There is only one way to awake this bone idol from his slumber. Roar like a hurricane. Rip the buildings from the earth. Uh, no words. Just a primordial scream. Why the yelling man? The 30-something man slowly lifts his head. He gives you a pensive look. Looks like a sow descendant. A lot of sow dock workers around. Uh, you're alive. You looked out for the long count there. Wait, what? No, he was just sleeping. What do you want, officer? He seems mad. See anything interesting in your dreams? Thank God, no. Was it a fathomless darkness into which we ought to be de uh, deferred? Like corpses to a mausoleum? The worker stares at you, his eyes dry from sleep. A web of wrinkles covers his tanned forehead. I don't know what you're talking about, kind sir, but when I'm out, then I'm really out. No corpses, no mausoleums, just 
quality time. A little me time in the abyssal pelagic zone. You can never return to it now. Only detective work remains. Wakefulness and detection. Tell me about Wild Pines. I point to the writing on his overalls. That's the name of my employer. I work in logistics. He doesn't sound too enthusiastic about this. How's that going? How's it going? <sighs> the dock worker lets out a big yawn, then stares at the cafeteria's terrace doors. Some fingerprints glisten on the glass. Haven't you noticed what's going on outside? Of course. It's a total madhouse. Good. Then you understand the gist of it. We would all be better off without the employers and their employment. For one, I can get some goddamn shit I right to sleep, I say. He rubs his eyes and lets his head fall back on the table. Oh, why are you sleeping here while the others are out striking? Nate got it. Majored's got it. He's guarding the gate. Or just getting some sleep. Or was. The way he says Measurehead implies ultimate trust in this head reckoner's physical prowess. He seems like a worthy rival. You should slay him. Who's behind organizing the strike? We are the workers. The union. We know what we need. What's right for us. You mean there's no leader? Okay. I guess there's also Evrard. He's in charge of the union. He's smart. Knows how to negotiate. He's got our back. What about the dead body in the yard? Yeah. What about it? I'm just trying to find out what you know about it. You know, people die here every day. Someone's found in a ditch, another one falls in a mano, a third one gets eaten by stray dogs. He respites. If someone has decided to die on top of a tree, then how is it my concern? Someone has to look into it. Looks like I'm that someone. Tell me what you know. I can tell you this. Trouble's ahead. You have a pretty solid feeling that the man's not just mouthing off. He's strong, but even he has reasons to be cautious here. Oh, uh, what trouble? You heard what I said. Draw your own conclusions. That's all I know, and I prefer to keep it this way. The lieutenant gives you a little nod, then makes a note in his blue notebook. So Union people think he was a killer, he thinks. Even Sleepy Hair. This doesn't help a lot, but it's something. Good work, detective. Uh, yours? Point at the bottle in the spilt rum. Indeed. Help yourself to some. Wait. No. Oh, it's empty. Sorry about that, pal. He blinks. All right, I'll let you sleep. The dock worker doesn't answer. His head is already back down on the table in sweet sleep. All right, because I don't really want to talk to people without Kim around. So I feel like he gives me some useful insights. So let's go and talk to this guy before we speak to Gart. And before we say, I guess, goodbye to Kim for the night. It's all about money, you know. You gotta spend money to make money. All right, so I can't speak to that guy anyway. Can I help you? He arches an eyebrow. So, about that money I owe. Yes, have you got it? I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? Uh, Kim is about to say something. Let him. I understand your predicament as the manager. However, he adjusts his glasses. I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking, and... He stops mid-sentence. I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. 
This conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. He turns to you with a heavy sigh. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant. We're done here. Alright, goodbye. So then the motor carriage. Well, I mean, I still have the key. That's why I didn't bring it up there. So I could just go up there and sleep if I want. I wonder if we can sleep in the dumpster out back. I mean, it looks long enough to co accommodate a body. That probably smells awful, considering it had, you know, corpse clothes in it. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. Look in the suspect transport enclosure. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What are those things? They are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. He makes a spinning motion with his hands. What do you mean you confiscated them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official's son and hi. So you took his spinners? Mm-hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. He nods. Isn't that corruption? Look at Kim. I don't know. Is it? I was going to take them into evidence but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. The lieutenant looks back, stone-faced. Um, did you want to put these spinners on your machine? Point at Kanima. No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. He hesitates. Yes, outrageously cool. He flashes a smile. Barely visible in the dark. Say nothing. The spinners shine so bright they reflect on the lieutenant's glasses. He doesn't say anything either. You said something about a pawn shop. Yes, there's one 100 meters south of here. I think it's called Roy's Nest or something. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open late. Yes, yeah, sorry, I can't take them. It wouldn't be right. Don't take the spinners. All right. Let's not take them now. Then come back once we realize we have to. Have this conversation again. And then take them. Sounds likely. Well, it seems like Kim likes them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take them from him. Uh, is he gonna leave for the night? I mean, can I just go upstairs? Yes. What do you want to know? Oh, here we go. I can ask about this now. I've been meaning to do this. Now that we've inspected this scene, I want to know more about this peeing competition you mentioned. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Ah, so this is a struggle over who runs Martinez. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite a brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. He leans in. So he volunteered to represent the 57th. 
but not out of competitiveness. So what's special? On the contrary. Uh, whoops. Uh, what's special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. I wonder what this says about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm. He raises an eyebrow, thinking it best to let you make the next move. There can only be one conclusion. I am the finest, a case-solving machine sent to outperform you in every way imaginable. A good joke. <laughs> he does not actually think it was a good joke. Hmm. Okay, it was a poor joke. We could use a good mannered cop off, don't you agree? If it helps you work better, okay. See it as competition. But don't expect me to. Now, was there anything else you wanted to ask about the competition? If not, we should move. Okay, enough of the competition then. Uh, tell me something else. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Why did the 41st send me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Yeah, that makes more sense than the other stuff I thought of. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a mess up? Like, as a joke? I've considered it. His voice is somber. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them. Not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Huh, so you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. Well, thank you, Kim. Alright, so I think I have another thought that I haven't allocated, right? No. I thought I had locked a new thought. Alright, so I'm holding to the skill point for now. Alright, I guess I don't really have another choice but to uh, sell these hubcaps. So let's grab those and head to the pawn shop. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio. I have something here. Transporting the cage. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. Well, thanks. I appreciate your help. Take the spinners. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. The magnificent hubcap spinners that Lieutenant Kitsuragi has donated to you so you can pay for your room at the Whirling. They're slate blue and shimmer haughtily in the light. Ooh, 200. So they said 100 meters south? Oh, it's this little place over here, isn't it? Right here. Did I open this up earlier? Or did I walk right past it? Plus one to electrochemistry. Which is not a stat that I'm super interested in having on my character. Yeah, I prefer the uh, guarding gloves for the plus one interfacing. I honestly care about electrochemistry. It seems a little dangerous. A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. This panel usually closes the water lock turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crashed Samarin butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Uh, pull the lever up. You pull the lever all the way up 
until the metal clicks against the contact pins. You hear a soft clunk. Then, nothing happens. I'll push it harder. Nothing happens. A cold gust of wind blowing in from the sea interrupts the silence of the situation. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant hums to himself while staring at your activities. Alright, release the lever. A spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to get across the canal. Some other way. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality will be restored on Wednesday morning? Alright, leave. Alright, I assume this is the pawn shop, right? Which might be where my gun is located, because they said I may have pawned it off. Some kind of a machine. An antique cash register. A bust of a woman. The plaque simply says DEI. In the dark, the film projector is whirring away. Mostly military wear, with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. Alright, before I interact with anything in here, I'm going to call the episode here, and in the next one, we'll speak to the pawn shop owner and see what else we can do in here. I'm hoping our gun is available, or a badge, something. One of the things that I'm missing that I need. Either way, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.